My ancestors could fly. They could fly. I remember as a child seeing crowds surrounding a man who looked like me, his feet floating, soaring and sinking, kicking, swimming above the crowd, mid-air, herk, jerk, skitter, bebop, slide, and freeze, the hover. I came from people destined to soar. Somehow I knew that would be my destiny, yet there is a dread, a foreboding that it would come at an inopportune time. The period at the point in the sentence where one expects a comma is always disconcerting. Here I am expecting a comma moment and you. I brace myself, doing the make the white man feel safe thing to the best of my ability, mentally folding my dick in half in deference, striving to project light skin, good hair and harmlessness, face dancing, choreographed to help you see the humanity in my darkness. This is a comma moment, separate moments in a continuing series, only you see a period moment, final moment, marking the end, full stop. You have gun in hand, scowl on face, both aimed at me, clearly not taking in the man before you. I transform from individual to other, you fear for your life, collision. Period. I feel my feet rise. I take my place in the soar instantly. I'm an ancestor. Mid-air. Guns, noose, bullets feel just like rope. Feet still go herk, jerk, skitter, bebop, slide, and freeze. The hover and the feeling following the floating, ah, finally free. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> I'm an artist making work in New York City, and my name is James Scruggs. My past work, Disposable Men, a solo piece about black men being overkilled like Hollywood monsters, greatly influenced and informed my new work, Three Fifths, which is an exploded out continuation of the phenomenon. I'm the writer and lead artist of this theatrical work in progress, referring to the 1787 compromise where African Americans were deemed three fifths of a person. Three Fifths is a theatrical work with video and radical interactivity performed by a multi-racial ensemble. It explores America's continued obsession with weaponizing black skin and repeatedly performing the act of killing African-American men, sometimes out of fear, sometimes for entertainment. Three-fifths will be performed in three separate theatrical spaces inside 3LD Art and Technology Center. We will create a dystopian theme park complex called Supremacy Land. <laughs> Supremacy Land consists of the atrocity carnival where historical racist carnage is transformed into entertaining interactive games. The beer garden is where reenactments of incidents of white supremacy are performed daily. Supremacy's private prison supplies human resources in the form of decarcerating ex-felons. We will install a life-size jail cell in the street level windows, which will be inhabited by a durational artist 24-7 during the production. It's a big room. A lot of white people. I, I just, I mean, for you in the back, you probably can't see me, but let me describe myself. I'm, I'm about five foot one. I am very fair, light-skinned. Um, but I am black. I just, uh, I, most black men are perceived by white people as being much taller and much darker <laughs> than they actually are. In Supremacy Land's Atrocity Carnival, there will be designated BBFFs stationed throughout to address the issue of white fragility by renting their black friendship. Think, think of me as your personal BBFF. Here's a little trick to help you feel comfortable should you find yourself in an all-black social scenario and you just want to fit in. Just add one, two, three, and shit to the end of any sentence for immediate access to urban-appropriated slang. It's like a verbal dashiki 
in a short phrase. And shit. Audience members will be given supremacy dollars and directed to randomly experience the several amusing booths of the Atrocity Carnival. One featured attraction will be a booth where you will confront and interact with an actual image of yourself as another race. Another favorite is Rodney King Karaoke. The classic Rodney King beating of 1991 is now a fun interactive game where four white audience members are invited to beat and kick a prone body shaped punching bag in sync to a colorful animated version of the actual police mob beating. There'll be something for everyone. Black audience members will get the chance to try on an amusing 3D police chalk outline that they can lie inside of and have a pic taken so that they will know what they look like when they're shot by an officer who feared for their life, then left for dead for several hours to remind the whole neighborhood what law and order looks like. The reverse middle passage moment where three-fifths honors the millions of Africans who died in the crossing disrupts the entire carnival. Time stops and the entire space goes blue. We're underwater. On the walls, hundreds of black bodies are projected, slowly sinking down. A live black woman in West African garb appears and marches through the space, gathering all the black people in the room. She leads them to the beer garden, which is momentarily a West African village. They are enthusiastically welcomed back to Africa. My hope is that people who see Three Fists will get a glimpse of some of the actual historical occurrences that now live as physical, measurable biological trauma inside people who look like me. My ask? I want to partner with scholars, epidemiologists, PhD candidates familiar with biological trauma passed down genetically from slavery, and game designers. I'm looking for commissioning partners, theaters, galleries, and or universities to host the entire work or iterations of it, and book publishers interested in working with me as well. So, when you see me around the campus, step up to me. I'm accessible. Start a conversation with me. And shit. <laughs>